Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Linux and Open Source News Show. This week we've got some drama around the use of Rust in the Linux kernel and the recently merged BcacheFS file system with a maintainer leaving on the one hand and giant patches being submitted when they shouldn't be on the other. In both cases, Linus Torvalds isn't super happy about this. We also have a new gaming console from the MU Deck project that runs Linux, but might be a bit too expensive for what it does. And we also have KDE looking at ways to generate more donations because they kinda need that. And we also have this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your all-in-one platform to create, publish, and manage your own website. Squarespace has really easy tools to make sure anyone can end up with a nice-looking, well-optimized website, no matter if you know how to code or not. Squarespace has what they call their blueprint system, which lets you pick from a variety of templates that are pre-built and will suit any type of website. And they even have the SEO tools you need to make sure your website doesn't end up in the last page of Google's search results. To go further, Squarespace has their own design engine to create your own pages. You can just drag and drop elements where you want them and you can change the colors, the fonts and just tweak the template however you want. And then you can add some extra features like creating your own online shop with a complete payment system. You can design your own logo from Squarespace, book your own domain name. So click the link in the description below to give Squarespace a shot and you'll even get 10% off your first domain or website purchase. So Linus Torvalds spoke at the Linux Foundation's Open Source Summit in China at the end of last week. And he talked about the state of the Linux kernel, pointing out that their work is never done. For example, they're still dealing with basic stuff like memory management issues and the real-time Linux project, which finally reached a state where it's ready 20 years after it was introduced. Torvalds also reminded the audience that updating to the latest kernel is not necessarily optional because the longer you delay an update, the harder it becomes to actually apply it and it becomes virtually impossible to patch older kernels as time goes on because even the kernel dev team can't help people with that if the kernel is too old. He specifically mentioned that for a bunch of Chinese IoT vendors who still use the Linux kernel 4 point something, which is woefully outdated and should not be used by anyone really. Now Torvalds is also disappointed in the rate of updates to Rust support in the kernel, saying that there's a lot of pushback from old hands in the Linux community who don't see Rust as a solid enough language, especially stating that the Rust infrastructure itself isn't that stable. And we'll talk about that in the next point of that video. Torvalds concluded on AI, saying that he's skeptical about the current hype, like any sane person would be, but he does hope that these tools will help with code review and bug detection. He also said that it got big vendors much more interested in the Linux kernel, like Nvidia, who according to Torvalds, are now on his list of companies doing really good work, probably because all AI work happens on Linux virtually and Nvidia's Linux support was lackluster at best, even though they're one of the GPU vendors who benefited the most from that AI hype. And finally, when asked if he had any grand vision for open source in the face of more and more cloud-based stuff or proprietary software, he said he didn't really and he never really had one because he's just an engineer. And that's probably why I really like the guy. He had some bullying problems in the past and some unsavory behaviors, but nowadays he seems like just a dude who likes what he's doing around Linux and he just wants Linux to get better. And I can only respect that now. Now let's talk about that Rust and Linux related drama. One of the Rust maintainers for the Linux kernel decided to step down from that project as they apparently got tired of dealing with non-technical nonsense, by which I can only assume they refer to people who keep talking about whether Rust should or should not be used in Linux, whether other languages would be a better fit, or whether specific ways of handling specific things in Rust are good or bad. 
when actually Rust in the Linux kernel is a done deal. It's been greenlit, it's started, people should now talk about how to make things work and work well instead of discussing if it should be done at all. At any rate, this maintainer, Wetson Almeida Filo, is a Microsoft engineer who contributed a lot to Rust support in the Linux kernel. And he is now giving up. He concluded his last post by saying that ignoring new languages is a good way to make sure another project does to Linux what Linux did to Unix. And look, most of my development knowledge is in HTML, JavaScript, CSS, PHP, and only in the way I can read and understand the code and what it does, but I couldn't really write it myself. So I am not the best person to judge if Rust should or shouldn't be included in the Linux kernel or any other project, or if it's a good or bad language. All I can say is probably projects that do allow you to contribute in newer modern languages that you want to use are going to receive more contributions than projects that force you to use a language you don't like or you don't want. And the argument of if you want a Rust based kernel, just write a brand new kernel. Come on, like no one is going to rewrite Linux just using Rust and no one is forcing anyone to use Rust. I can't judge if Rust should be in the Linux kernel or not, but Linus Torvalds can, and he said it should be in, and he's encouraging the project, so who am I to say it's not a good idea? Now, still on that Linux drama, there's some problems around the new Bcache FS file system that's been merged recently in the Linux kernel as an experimental option. The developer behind that file system seems to be pushing massive patches to that file system even during a new kernel version release cycle. And this is apparently pissing off Linus Torvalds to the point where he regrets merging bcachefs in the first place, saying that no one sane uses it currently because it's experimental and that every patch submitted to that file system always happens during the release cycle instead of before that cycle. And he also says that these patches are now starting to affect non bcachefs stuff as well. Basically, Torvalds is now considering whether bcachefs should even be in the upstream kernel for now, because if it requires these kinds of giant patches, it's probably not really ready to be upstream. And the developer behind this file system didn't take kindly to that. Basically saying that he's making the best file system ever, so his work should be merged. Stuff like, this is the file system we're all going to want to run in just a year or two, or we need this. And Torvalds answered this hubris by saying that they have rules for a stable development environment for a reason, and that these massive patches are disrupting the stability of the kernel itself, because they're going to introduce new bugs for bcachefs, but also potentially for other stuff. And if you don't understand why pushing these thousand line long patches during the development cycle of the kernel, it's because during this development cycle, you should only submit bug fixes, not giant patches that also contain new features. These new features should be submitted when there's a new kernel version being started. And then you say, okay, this is what we're starting with and I'll fix the issues with that new code during that cycle. You shouldn't push mid cycle a giant patch that adds new stuff. And that's what the person is doing and he's answering the criticisms around this with a lot of hubris and a lot of ego. You're making a file system. Your experimental file system is not more important than the stability of the entire Linux kernel. So take a step back and submit your patches for the next cycle. Thank you. Now the Sovereign Tech Fund, the organization that donated a nice clean 1 million euros to GNOME a while back, now also donated 686,000 euros to FreeBSD. As a reminder, the STF is a funding organism supported by the German Ministry of Economy and Climate Action. And they're starting to build a reputation as good friends of free software. Their grants do come with strings attached. You need to offer a specific project to get one of these grants and the money you receive can only be invested in that specific project. And for FreeBSD, that work will have to go towards infrastructure and security, notably reducing the project's technical debt, improving the tools and processes they use, adding more security frameworks to make sure that FreeBSD can be compliant with various regulators, automating the continuous integration and continuous deployment processes, and generally just making FreeBSD more robust and secure. The work has already started and it should continue throughout 2025 and maybe a bit beyond that. 
And I will never complain about those public organisms using public taxpayer money to fund projects that are public and that anyone can use, modify and redistribute. Public funds should be used to fund open source projects that anyone can use. They should not go to giant companies that ship proprietary software. So well done Germany and I hope more countries follow suit. Now we have more news about KDE this week, this time something they plan to add in Plasma 6.2 that will likely annoy some people. In short, it's a notification that will appear once a year at most to ask you if you would like to donate to the KDE project. It is a system notification, it uses the same style of notification as everything else, it is not intrusive, it doesn't block your work, and no matter what you click on, whether it's the close button, the donate button, or the no thanks button, it will go away for a full year. You can also disable it completely, and distros can decide not to ship with that notification. And this decision comes from the realization that KDE needs more donations to keep going for hosting everything that they have on the web, their dev infrastructure and websites, for organizing the in-person events that are crucial to organize future developments and big projects, but also for funding development sprints, paying developers and paying people that do the work that volunteers don't want to do. As KD says, the worst case scenario for that notification is that no one donates through it and they will just remove it after one or two years. And they also published answers to most questions that are sure to come their way. As in, why is it a notification or a pop-up, it's annoying, to which they say it really isn't, it's once a year and easy to dismiss. Or stuff along the lines of KD should be funded by distros and vendors, not individuals, which Yes, that's true, and they are, a little bit, mostly by Valve through Blue Systems, the company that funds KDE, but that doesn't mean relying on a single source of revenue or on just institutional funding is healthy. If only because then you are beholden to the companies who are paying you and they might force you to go into a certain direction. What is sure is there are going to be a small fringe of people who see any asking for donation, any monetary transaction in the open source as undesirable. These are the people who are calling Zorin OS a scam because they have an ultimate edition that is paid to support the project, or who are calling elementary OS begware because they ask you to donate what you want, including zero dollars if you want to download elementary OS. Obviously, these are a niche, and for most people, a once a year notification will just not be a problem. I even think it's not enough. Personally, I would add a sober simple donation box in the home page of the settings that you can remove if you never want to see again. But I think that would be a better place. Look at Thunderbird or Wikipedia. When they ask for donations, they have a permanent thing that disappears when you use the app or the website, but that is always visible. And I think Eddie should do that as well. A once per year notification is not going to be enough to generate any revenue, I think. Now we have a new Linux console in the works. You might know about EmuDeck, the emulation tool with a handheld interface that works particularly well on the Steam Deck. Well, it looks like they're starting to make hardware now with what they call the EmuDeck machine. Now, it is a crowdfunding project, so all usual warnings about this apply, but it will run Bazite as its system, the immutable Linux distro based on Fedora. And the goal is to provide something that is completely plug and play, no drivers, no hassle. It looks exactly like a Dreamcast, without the logos of course, and the goal isn't just to do emulation with it, because they'll have two models. The EM1 is just for emulating old titles, it has an underpowered N97 CPU, it's integrated graphics and 8 gigs of RAM. But they have the EM2 as well, which has a Ryzen 7 8600G, it has its integrated Radeon 760M, but overclocked, and 16 gigs of RAM. And that second model is apparently able to play Cyberpunk at 60 FPS at 1080p low using FSR. So it's decently capable, more powerful than a Steam Deck. Both systems would come with an Xbox-like Game Sur Nova Lite controller, but it will support other controllers, of course, because it's Linux, everything works. What's more, if this crowdfunding is successful, they would like to work on a docking station for the EM2 that would let you upgrade the graphics to a Radeon 7600's desktop GPU, which would give the console a lot more oomph. Now the prices are 299 euros for the EM1 and 760 euros for the EM2, including the early bird crowdfunding discounts which feels a bit steep in both cases. 
Now at the time I wrote this, the campaign had already reached 14,000 euros out of the 63,000 that they wanted. I find it a bit expensive, I would not be interested at those prices, but if that's something you want to encourage, I left the link in the description as well. As usual, it's a crowdfunding project, so all warnings apply, you might never see any product in your hand and might never see your money back. You don't know. And still on the topic of Linux consoles, the Steam Deck is apparently still flying off the shelves. Looking at the global top sellers list on Steam, the deck placed second after Black Myth Wukong, so at least its pre-orders, and before Warhammer 40k Space Marines 2's pre-orders. At least if you remove the free-to-play titles, which don't matter here because we're counting uh, the revenue and free-to-play don't generate sales of the title itself. The list is ordered by revenue, so it doesn't mean that the deck sold more copies than Space Marine 2 sold pre-orders, but it does mean that it is still selling really well, because if you look at Black Myth, it apparently already sold 14 million copies just on Steam. At 60 euros, this means 840 million euros in revenue. If we assume the deck made even half of that same revenue to land on the second spot of the top sellers list, we have a magnificent 420 million euros of sales. That's 1 million basic LCD decks sold, or 620,000 units of the most expensive 1TB OLED deck. Now, even if you assume that the deck generated a quarter of the revenue of Black Myth's pre-orders to land on the second spot, that's still 500,000 LCD decks sold over a short time period, which seems to indicate that the deck is still incredibly popular, which is very good for Linux gaming and for Linux in general. But it also indicates that we're probably far away from seeing a Steam Deck 2 or a completely revised version, because Valve definitely doesn't need to update that device to make it sell. So we're probably stuck with the current Steam Deck and Steam Deck OLED, for a while, which is fine because those are excellent devices. Excellent devices just like the ones offered by today's sponsor, Tuxedo Computers. They make laptops and desktops that run with Linux out of the box, which is definitely better than buying something that comes with Windows and hoping that Linux will run well, because at least with Tuxedo, you know all the devices were tested under Linux and they actually contribute code upstream to make sure that all that hardware works well with Linux. They have a solid range that should cover every need and every price point, and that's all I use nowadays. All the videos, podcasts, and members and Patreon exclusive stuff Stuff that I do is created using one of their laptops and all my gaming needs are served with one of their small form factor desktops, the Tuxedo Q. So if you need a new computer, you want to run Linux on it and you want to support a company that actually contributes to Linux, click the link in the description below and check out Tuxedo Computers. They're really, really good. Anyway, thank you all for watching. You know where all the buttons are. Click them, please, so the algorithm likes us and makes Linux more popular in general on YouTube and makes me a bit more money so I can live more comfortably as well. And if you really want me to live more comfortably, there are links in the description as well to support the channel. You'll gain some nice new perks like a daily version of these videos. So, thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!